Drone hyperlapses can be really spectacular if done correctly, and the Mini 3 is an excellent tool for this technique. Waypoint is by far the most useful of the four hyperlapse modes in DJI drones. After my video about hyperlapses with the Mini 3, many users asked me to explain more in depth how to make the most of Waypoint mode. After entering hyperlapse mode in the photo video menu above the shutter, we are presented with the four modes available. Waypoints is the one at the bottom. In waypoints mode we choose two or more points. Let's start with the simplest one, by setting only two points. We fly to the position where we want our hyperlapse to start and frame our shot for the beginning of the sequence. We open the window Set Waypoint by tapping on the small arrow to the right and then we tap on the first icon to the left with the plus sign to set the first point. The software will store the position of the drone, the altitude and the direction of the camera. We then fly to the point where we want our hyperlapse to end, frame our shot and tap on the second icon to store it. When we have finished entering the points, we tap on the three dots to the right to enter the other options. To the left there is a button Normal Sequence, in which case the drone will start the hyperlapse from the first point. If we tap on it, it toggles to Reverse, in which case the hyperlapse will start from the last point, which might save battery time. We then choose Interval to specify the frequency of shots. One shot every 3 seconds is fine for an hyperlapse where the movement comes mainly from cars or people. Then we choose the length of the resulting short movie. In most cases I like to choose 12 seconds, which produces about 300 photos, since I encode at 24 frames per second. For users who encode at 30 frames per second, 360 photos will be needed for 12 seconds. Shooting 300 photos at a frequency of one shot every second would take 5 minutes, as 300 seconds divided by 60 equals 5. Since we have a frequency of a shot every 3 seconds, our hyperlapse will take 15 minutes. The Mini 3 has a good battery life of more than 30 minutes and can easily handle it, but we should not waste too much time setting it up and return home as fast as possible once the hyperlapse is done. There is the possibility to purchase a special battery with a flying time of over 40 minutes. This makes the Mini 3 a perfect tool for hyperlapses, but sadly this battery is not available at the moment in all the Europe. In this case I have set the first point looking down at this little village from a high altitude. For the second and final point I move to the left of the village, slightly closer to it, a lower altitude, and I move the camera to frame Mount Etna. This is the result. As you can see, when setting only two points, the movement is very smooth. In most cases I prefer to use only two points. But let's see what happens if we use more than two. I start from the position as before, but this time I set a second point more or less in the middle of the sequence, by descending moving to the left and keeping the camera pointing to the center of the village. Then I set the last point by moving to the left and pointing the camera towards Mount Etna. This is the result and in my opinion the movement of the camera in the second part is too abrupt. I prefer the version with only two points. In this other case I'm using again three points, but taking care to avoid abrupt moves. I'm sliding to the left, maintaining the camera of Mount Etna in the same position on the frame. I'm starting at an altitude of 60 meters, rising to 100 at the second point, and then down again to 40 meters. Since in the scene the movement comes mostly from the clouds, the variation of altitudes works in my opinion quite well. It is relatively smooth and adds interest to the clip. In this other example, which I shot some time ago with the Mavic 2 Pro, I used four points to get a sort of ellipse around this monastery. 
The changes of direction are not perfectly smooth, but I find that it works quite well on this occasion. So I suggest using only two points in most situations and experimenting from time to time with more than two, but avoiding abrupt changes of direction. Every waypoint mission is saved in memory and it is an extremely useful feature. We can access the list of missions by tapping on this tiny icon at the top left corner of the save waypoint window. The last mission will be at the top of the list. We can delete a mission that we don't expect to use or rename others for finding them easily. There are countless applications of this feature, especially for surveys or mapping, but even in videography, we can use it, for example, to shoot the same location at different times of the day or in different seasons, a bit like Monet's Cathedral. Let's go back to a previous hyperlapse of Mount Etna. The movement is mostly in the clouds and I've chosen a frequency of one shot every three seconds. But in the case of clouds, we often get better results with a frequency of four or five seconds. I would like to try with one shot every 4 seconds. All I have to do is to go to the hyperlapse waypoint menu, click on the icon on the top left of the window, select our previous hyperlapse, choose a frequency of a shot every 4 seconds, and simply press on the shutter. The result is actually a bit more interesting with clouds moving slightly faster. After completing hyperlapse, a short movie is automatically generated by the app. In the past, I never took seriously the auto-generated movie, but in recent models it has improved, and in the Mini 3 it is actually decent, and can be used for posting on social media. Especially for hyperlapses taken in vertical format. But obviously much better results are obtained by saving the individual photos as RAW or JPEG, color grading them, and then putting them together into an hyperlapse. Again, in the past I would dismiss the JPEG files and concentrate only on the RAW one, for a much better final quality. But the JPEG files in the Mini 3 are good, and they can be used for less demanding post-processing. This is the automatically generated short movie of a simple two-point hyperlapse. In hyperlapse mode it's not possible to save the single photos in both JPEG and RAW, so I chose to save them as RAW, and this is the post-processed version using RAW files. I shot the whole sequence again using the saved mission, this time storing the individual photos as JPEG. And as you can see, the quality of the JPEG file is excellent. There are some important techniques to follow for good quality hyperlapses, like choosing the correct shutter speed to master motion blur and the appropriate frequency of shot for each situation. And obviously, it is extremely important to use ND filters. I will post the links in the description to the one I use. In this video, I only explain how to make the most of the mode waypoints. So I would suggest watching this video dealing in depth with the most important factor, motion blur. You find links on the screen now. I also suggest watching this one for all you need to know about time lapses and hyperlapses of all kind. There are some really good ones and it is great fun. Compared to the R2S or the Mavic 3, in the Mini 3 there is no control for the speed of the drone during the hyperlapse. And this makes sense because we cannot really control it, as the speed depends on the number of the shot taken, the frequency of shots, and the distance traveled during the mission. Let me explain with a couple of examples. I set the first point with the drone pointing down on a road in a village and then move backward, raising the camera to frame Mount Etna in the distance. I set the second point at a distance of about 45 meters. Then I set the frequency of one shot every 3 seconds, and I try to set the length of the video at 12 seconds, as usual. 
but I cannot go above 6 seconds. As the drone cannot go at a speed slow enough to take 300 shots in the specified distance. After hitting a shutter, the app takes indeed 150 shots, half of the 300 that I wanted. I noticed that the speed during the mission was about 0.1 meters per second. And that makes sense because 150 photos at a frequency of one shot every 3 seconds equal 450 seconds, which at the speed of 0.1 meter per second correspond to 45 meters. Therefore, to be able to shoot 300 photos, I need to travel 90 meters. In fact, this time I set the second point at a distance of 90 meters. And I do get a hyperlapse with 300 photos. But what happens if the distance traveled is longer? This time I set the distance to 180 meters, twice the previous one. As you can see, this time the drone moves much faster, at 0.2 meters per second, which is double the previous one. Click on this link to watch my video about hyperlapses with the Mini 3. And don't forget to hit the like button, if you found this video interesting. Thank you.